Hey YouTube, Andy Ditch here. So I want to start over my intro again. So I want to say thank you to Amherst Police who helped me with this. It's not your job to be my taxi and make sure I'm safe because the hospital didn't want to help me. Dad doesn't want to help me and Dad couldn't at that point. And I want to say thank you and I'm sorry that you had to deal with this. So, this video recording right here, how I show you how they, how I asked for help, I was denied the help, I asked why, this explains why I have a communication disability that causes my behavior issues and emotional issues, it's why I don't have a mental illness, it's why when Strong Memorial Medical Center evaluated me time and time again, that it was, my emotional issues were from the autism and untreated uh, issues, and that's why my dent neurologist said that, that's why all these professionals say that that's why I keep getting discharged by mental health clinics. It's why a tandem uh, mental health home could not help me. My autism is primary. My developmental disability is primary. I can't help it. And I'm being denied help. And then they're blaming me for so-called refusing the help. It's easy to blame me with a disability who needs help. Wanting the help and gets upset for not getting the help. And then I ask for help with accommodation so I don't have behavior issues. And I get ignored and, and, and mistreated because of it. And then I run away and panic to avoid a behavior issue. Of hurting myself or others or getting upset causing a scene. And they're giving me a hard time. And then they say it was against medical voice when I was discharged. And I want to say thank you to the Amherst cops who told the hospital security that I uh, asked the hospital security after bringing me back to the hospital to have me wait inside. They said no, they don't want me in there, but then they okayed me being outside, and they were very angry and rough with my stuff, and it's on tape, don't worry, and they put, uh, they didn't want me there, and then I... Heard the officer say, uh, uh, I heard the uh, head security honcho guy with a white t-shirt who said, no, we don't want him on here at all. We don't want him here at all. Get him out on the sidewalk. We don't want him on our property. I want him trespassing. The Amherst cop said, no, I'm not trespassing him. And the, off and the officer said that. Uh, they that uh I have a right to be there. Well, and I and he and and uh, and to wait for my ride. My ride would be there in half an hour. Well, Amherst cop said to the guys because they wanted me off their property. They didn't care. I had medical issues or can't take care of myself. That they were afraid of me running away again when there was a sensory trigger because it's right by the street. I have autism. They stated that, and the security said. I don't care. He does this all the time. He doesn't need be here. We don't want him here. He gives us a problem. He's nothing but a danger. And the uh, uh, Amherst police said he's not. You guys are the problem for not helping him. It's all on tape, guys. That'll be part two. And I want you to know that I called Amherst police to ask them for help with getting my uh, police report on this. And it's going to show you guys that I'm not a problem, but the hospitals are. I'm asking for help. You're going to learn this is what I do all the time. And I get mistreated because I need the help with diaper changes and hygiene and taking my medicines, crossing the street, and I almost got hit by a car. And you know what Amherst police said? They got a call because somebody almost got hit by a car just right before they came to get me. They were looking for me. They didn't know I w where I was at until somebody had helped me call 911. By the way, my friend Doug Usiak helped me get somebody because I didn't know where I was at. And Doug Usiak is going on vacation for two weeks. So I had Doug Usiak help me get somebody, thank you, Doug, to be able to call somebody for the police to get me help. Thank you, sir, for helping me. The stranger that helped me with Doug's assistance. So I was on the phone with Doug, and Doug didn't want me hanging up until he knew I had somebody to help me. 
You see what I'm trying to get at here, guys? I asked for the help. I'm aware of needing that help and what help I need to prevent the behavior issues. I go to Strong Memorial Medical Center. They give me the accommodations that I had asked for. They give me more. You know what else they give me? They give me a social story on my discharge papers. You see that I don't have that by Miller Fillmore Suburban. So I had a hard time understanding why I'm being discharged or why they're refusing me out. And I want you to know that in part three, I'm sharing my APS worker's fo uh, phone conversation that I had with him today. And he wants me to go back to the hospital because dad's refusing to take care of me and give me such a hard time. In part two, uh, part, uh, uh, two of this video, uh, 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 of videos, that is, I'm going to start showing you. I come home. Dad is fine with me with the police. Never go, does it in front of the police, uh, what he does to me. Once he le once his police leaves, I come inside. Dad's starting to clean the house up. And I asked Dad, well, Dad, can you help me clean? I want to help you clean. He says, leave me alone. Don't talk to me right now. I said, Dad, I just want to ask you if you can help me clean. I want to help you. He said it again. So I said, fine. I'll go walk outside. I'll call Henry. I called Henry. Henry said, go back home. I don't have capacity. They're working on guardianship. I feel what Henry said is 100% accurate for him to defend himself. I defend myself all the time. And I want to be clear. I did not realize I had said in a YouTube video that Henry said it's okay to go get hit by a car, to freeze, and lay in snow, and, and be homeless. Henry never said that. But the way I feel of not getting help, and I explained that to him... That's how I feel, and that's why I said that way. And he said, okay, well, people have called me today and got upset because I didn't help you. Henry's supervisor never said that either. I want you to know that as well. The police have never said that, but their actions made me feel like it. and made me feel like I wasn't worth enough getting help. The only option I have is the hospital because I don't have capacity and there's no other options. Well, I've tried that. In this video, I'll show you some of the things that my dad has helped me with and my friend Doug Usiak has helped me with. With social skills. Thank you, guys. So, if Doug has a problem with what Henry said to me today, I'm going to say, Doug, I don't have a problem with this one. It's only fair that he defended himself because I do all the time. Yeah, maybe maybe it's how he worded it wasn't the nicest but I did not state or clarify that I felt like he didn't care about me and wanted me to do those things. And I want to be clear, they did tell me to call 211 and ask for shelter placement or go to a hospital but a shelter did not want to help me. Could not help me because of my disability and medical needs. And number three. The whole reason why I refused to go to the hospital or medical treatment when I had been. Even had been in front of Officer Bentley. Which I had been told that was already taken care of. So I don't even have to make the complaint. That... I only know I had been in front of Officer Bentley because I heard it on recording. You guys heard it when I was uploading it. I think I uploaded that video. I don't remember for sure. I don't even want to even go looking at it. But Officer Bentley allowed me had been right in front of him. And I got upset because of that. And I was going to make a complaint. Well, I called Crisis Services after the issue with Dad and, and everything on, on, on the, other, uh, the other day. And Crisis Services was concerned that I had been. So they wanted EMS. I was had I had a headache. So they called EMS. EMS comes out. I said, I don't want to go to the hospital because the hospitals have refused me. Officer Bentley denied me 9, uh, 941, denied me my uh, any help. And I didn't want to go to the hospital voluntarily. And I told him that. I was honest. I recorded it with the EMS people. And then I want you to know that Mobile Outreach from Crisis Services called me. 
They call my Google Voice number. And because I don't use that number, I asked her, can you call me? And I gave her my mobile number, and I told her why. And I said, because I want to make sure I get a good call connection. And I told her what's going on. She said, well, because of your issues, I want you to go to the hospital, get away from dad, get out of, uh, get out, of, uh, get your head checked out, and tell them what's going on. I said, well, okay, I'll go to DeGraff, because if I go to DeGraff, I don't have to deal with the noisy emergency room, right? And I'll go to DeGraff because it's quieter, and then that way there, if I get admitted, uh, they'll just transfer me to Bill Fillmore Suburban, and they'll transfer me upstairs. Well, that's what they do with me. I'd rather go to an emergency room that doesn't have the sensory overload like Buffalo General. That's why I went there. And I found out that uh, a doctor, I mean, Dr. Ted McAndrews, quarter of the ER doctor, said that, Dr. Ted McAndrews comes to goes to Middle Fillmore Suburban Hospital, and I could probably ask for him to do the testing and help me with getting placement and stuff. So I did that. They didn't. They didn't know about that, but apparently, yeah, he does go there. But yeah, apparently they didn't even ask him. But I dealt with a psychiatrist that I don't really like because she. Treats me like I don't need any help and I'm too smart and I don't, and because I can repeat things. I feel like I'm discriminated by that psychiatrist. And I didn't even get the psychiatry note from Miller Fillmore at all on the patient portal. But yeah, it's sad. And then when I find out that they want me to make my appointment to uh, within the week, within one week to see my primary. I call my primary doctor's office and I leave them a voice message upset because they discharged me. And then I called them back and I said, when I was with Amherst Police, I wanted to set it up. So I had it set up. It's set up on Friday, by the way. And I explained to them what's going on. They said, yeah, we'll get you on Friday. Can you get here? I said, yeah, I guess just, if I can't, I'll, I'll reschedule it, you know. Well, I want help. It's great. Help me get out. Well, Dad's giving me a hard time. I'll get to that in a second. So I get, so I get it set up. I'm sorry, but I'm asking for help here. I told him why. Right. Well, I was told. Well. You should go back to the hospital because we were told that you were being admitted and keep kept for testing and placement. I said no, they discharged me. I'm with Amherst Police right now. They're helping me sort this out because they don't want me getting hit by a car and they're giving me a hard time here. She said, "Oh, okay, let me put you on the schedule." So they got me first in with my primary MD, not the nurse practitioner, and. I want you to know that this is getting to be very frustrating. Well, I found out I don't have capacity. The do hospital, I've been told by Disability Rights New York, Neighborhood Legal Services, all these agencies are not allowed to discharge person without capacity. Without a court order. So, I talked to Henry Hepner. Henry said, I thought they were keeping you. I thought They told me that you walked out AMA. Well, Henry, now you have a recording to listen to and watch. No, I didn't leave AMA. I was discharged. I also emailed the recordings that you could hear in this. And I want you to know that, Henry, I don't feel comfortable going back to the hospitals because that was tried. Numerous times. And look what happens. Henry wants me to go back to the hospital because of dad's issues and things like that. So I can't, don't feel comfortable going. Well, long story short, I hope I can get help and get out of the situation. But, meanwhile, I'm having a hard time. 
So anyways, I found out from Henry that they said I left AMA. And I said, no, I didn't. And he said, well, they, I asked him, well, did they ever call you to uh, talk to you about me? He said, no, they never t called me to ever talk to me. And to after you left the hospital, AMA. And I said, I never left AMA. I was discharged. I refused my discharge papers. He said, oh. I said, I gave the reports and everything. You could even call, follow up with Amherst Police. Because they kept me safe from being hit by a car again. I didn't know that. I'll have to check into that. But thanks for letting me know that. And I said, what do you think I'm so upset for? I even asked for accommodations. And I showed you how I asked for it. And I been, was denied it. After telling the HHS that they were helping me. So my plan going forward, guys, is when Dad's helping me with things and things are going well for a little bit, I'm not telling Henry that it's going good or help, oh, going good at all. You know why? Because Dad, does, Dad will stop helping me like he does and go after me and cause me issues. So every single day, I'm going to tell Henry I'm not getting the help I need. Because that way there, I can get out of here quicker. Because the part of the issue, why I'm having issues is because I email and I CC Doug all the time. What a minute I'm getting Dad's help. Everything's going well. I don't need any help. I'm getting all the help. The next minute I'm not. So it makes it hard for Henry to be able to help me. See what I'm trying to get at here. Right? Well... I'm having a hard time because Dad has lied about me. And part of the reason why I'm not getting help is you're going to hear in this recording the doctor says that they were reached out to Dad and he never answered. Okay, that's number one. So Dad doesn't want to cooperate. Somebody from Suburban Adult Services said to me the reason why the doctor didn't diagnose me is because Dad was inconsistent in his reporting of me. He said, one minute, I d d don't want to clean, I don't want, I don't want everybody to do the work for me, and all of this other stuff, and and I am defiant, I refuse uh, to listen to him and stuff, but here in this video, you're going to hear, I'm asking Dad, I uh, Dad said, you know, a surgery caused me sensory overload, I said, Dad, please stop, I'm getting upset here, and then he says, Dinner's done. I just want to tell you that. I said, well, you could say that, Dad. And then he kept going at me, causing me sensory overload. And then you, Joe came home and told Dad to stop. And he stopped. And I said, Dad, you didn't have to cause me sensory overload. I said, I will be right there. It's all on tape, guys. You'll hear that later on. And this wasn't meant to be about Dad or what's going on here at home. Dad made it that way. He wants the entertainment. I don't want to stress. I don't want sensory overload. I go through that every day with Dad. So that's part of what causes me my emotional issues. But then Dad won't stop. And kept going at me. And caused me issues. And I kept saying, Dad, I don't want to argue. I don't want to get upset. I kept saying that. Guys, you hear me say this stuff to my dad. I'm expressing myself. But dad keeps going at me. This is why the hospital refuses to help me. They don't take the abuse and neglect seriously, so I call the police again. Earlier, t t uh, dad had stated how I'm defiant. Well, because dad says I'm defiant, it hurt my feelings because I'm trying to ask dad for help. He wants me to clean. He's blowing up that I'm not cleaning or helping him. But I ask him for help to clean. He blows up at me. I want to follow your rules, Dad. I'm asking you for help. And you b degrade me. You bully me. And I don't like it. And then I had being because of it. See what I'm trying to get at here. I don't want the behavior issues. My dad causes them. 
And then he says I'm defiant to everybody. I'm going against his expectations. Why? Because I pointed out to you and Joe that I was not eligible for a tandem because the Office of Mental Health would not help me because of my diagnosis. I have developmental disabilities, not mental health. You fight me on that one, Dad and Joe. I print out my medical records from uh, Strong Memorial Horizons Best Self, and I show them to you. Even my current one. And you argue, Dad. You fight me. You say I'm both. And I'm refusing help. I'm refusing to accept my diagnosis. Joe says, Joanne has even said that to him. And I asked him, I thought Joanne said that he has a, she, she hasn't talked to you in two years. Because the last time Joe did that, earlier last month, I accused Joanne and made a video of it. And I think I did apologize to Joanne on YouTube, even though I didn't know that jo uh, Joanne did not talk to Joe. And I didn't know that. But Joe said he she did. And then I clarified it the... So, uh, oh, like two weeks later, after Joe had said that, last week that was, and I found out Joe doesn't talk to Joanne, but when Joe talked to Joanne, she said that. Well, Dad, Joe, I'm repeating what you told me, and Joanne gets extremely angry at me, and I'm only repeating what you say, Joe, just like I repeated what I heard people say Michael Ditch did to me as a kid. When he did not do any of that stuff. See, this is why the entire family doesn't want to deal with us. My dad adds symptoms to me of my mental health issues because he fights me. You know, and when I, I've been trained as a little kid. To ask questions to clarify what is said. One step instructions. Simple, direct, short sentences. Limit the distractions. Come to me. These are all the things in my comment. Uh, my things that I've been learning as a child. Do you see what I'm trying to get at here? I'm asking my dad for help to understand, are you going to help me, dad? And when? And I get ignored. He says no, or gives me later, or maybe. And I need help with my medication, or testing my sugar, or some bullshit like that. And he's fighting me on that. And then I don't know what to expect, and I don't want, and I have trouble taking my medicines, and I need help, or I have trouble getting help out by doctors, and this is the part that causes me behavior issues, and I bring this up to dad, I need help. And he abuses me because I need this help, and then he neglects me and doesn't help me with, I can show you. Every speech report has stated, I have trouble with yes-no questions, and I need this help of the WH questions. I found out from my last speech therapist, Amy, um, that WH questions just means what, when, who, where, what, and how, and when. I need help with that. I need help with expressing myself according to this report. The report in 2023, Strong Memorial, even Horizons. I need guided communication. Yeah, I use AEC app. Yeah, I'm very good at repeating things over and over again. But I do need assistance with guided interactions. I need to be asked yes, no questions. I need to be asked for clarifying information so you can better understand what I'm saying. Because I give out way too much information. It isn't so much I have disorganized run on uh, sentences and words. It is that I speak too much, too fast, too much at once. 
Other people have that auditory processing issue because of the way I talk. But I need this help, guys. But if you look at the way this guy, uh, this person writes the report, right, and you look at the, uh, um, let's see here, this one here, right, you see that I have that disorganized, uh, you know, like communication. And I've been told what it is. They actually call this a cognitive communication disorder from a TBI. So you know that is what's causing this issue. Oh shit. I had to, I was going to call, um, 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 headway on that. But yeah, guys, I need assistance here. See? Do you see this, guys? AAC I need. I need assistance. I need guided communication. I need accommodations. I go asking for it so I don't have behavior issues. And I get denied. Have a good one, guys. Hey YouTube, Andy Ditch here. So this is a note. I want you to know I'm getting frustrated here. Okay? I would not have to go to the hospital if dad was not abusing me and neglecting me, I would not have the emotional and behavior issues if I wasn't being abused or neglected. I'm going to ask Henry to email me the doc my doctor's my primary care doctor's re request for guardianship because of my autism intellectual disability. Okay. But, Dad's refusing to allow me to have paper. Let's just forget about what Dad is doing and not doing for me. But, because nobody will help me, I asked for assistance at the hospital, and I asked for accommodations at the hospital, and... I get denied them. And I can't help that. I ask for that assistance. I can't help it. Before I start this video, so the people who claim that I am refusing help, I'm refusing my diagnosis. Remember what Erica Rachel Rodman said, Joanne Lumacuso said, and jo uh, uh, Rose Audrey Leo, and Tracy uh, Fritz had said, I'm refusing help, refusing to accept the diagnosis. Like what everybody says on YouTube. I'm making all this shit up. I'm faking my issues. I'm schizophrenic. I'm refusing to accept the diagnosis. Remember? Okay. Well, the way people treat me make me feel like I am when I know I am not. I'm not making this shit up. So before I go into anywhere, I want to say thank you to my friend Doug Usiak who helped me get somebody to find out where I'm at. So, let's start off with something. This, this is going to be criticism. This video is going to be criticism towards my family. Let's start off with something positive. So, I call my dad. I tell him on the intercom. I'm being discharged. I'm being denied help. Right? 
I need help. I'm scared. Well, I call him. He answers it at that time. Or did he call me? I don't remember which one. But he told me to go back to the hospital. He'll be right there to pick me up. I said, Dad, I don't want to go back because of the way they treat me and everything. I'm scared. And he, everybody leaves me here without having help to see what I go through. And I explained that to my dad. And my dad said, I don't care. Just go back. If you don't want to go back, go over to your see your mom. She's right, right around the corner from there. I said, yeah, but... I don't want to get hit by a car. I'm on. I'm. I almost got hit. I almost got hit. So you guys know, before or as I was crossing Maple Road, as I had a hard time. One, I was upset. Two, being upset made it harder for me to cross the street. Okay, and two, I had a hard time with knowing how far a car was and how close it was. And the car started clearing up on one side, and then they started slowing down on the other, so I thought it was safe to cross. I thought I had, a, first of all, I here's how I saw it. I thought I had enough time to cross the street safely. Okay? Because the one side cleared up, the other side, there was a car, or a bus or something, I don't remember what it was exactly, because again, I was upset. So my judgment's already off to begin with, but being upset just makes it much harder for me. Right? So I misjudged there was a school bus, and the school bus had to stop for me. I think it was a school bus or a truck or something. I don't remember. I can't remember. I just remember it was a big vehicle. Let's just put it that way. So I that vehicle stopped, and I started walking across the street. Well... I had no idea where I was at, and Dad calls, or I call him. Dad answers, tells me to go uh, back. I said, Dad, I don't want to get hit by a car. I started walking back there, but I didn't want to get hit by a car. I almost got hit, and yet I'm asking for some help. I have no idea where to go. At that point, I I was scared to go back to the hospital. I was scared to cross the street to go see Mom. I ended up walking in the, on the streets there, right? So I almost get... I'm in a panic here. I'm scared. So Dad tells me to go back to the hospital. I'll be there in a little bit to pick up. I didn't want to do that because I don't want to get hit. So I go... So I want to say thank you, Dad, for at least tempting that. Two, I called Doug Usiak. Doug Usiak asked me for street signs. I didn't want to give it to him because I didn't want him calling the police to get me help. So I started walking down this one st side street. It was too long. I had no idea what street it was on. I, But I did tell Doug at the beginning of the street where I was at and where I was walking. But I didn't know how to pronounce the word of the street over there, so I had to spell it. And Doug had me go to uh, find somebody who could help me call the police so I want to say thank you Doug for helping me with that and I because of your help I went to somebody to help me and they called the police for me Dammers please come they have me call dad I call dad they talk to dad they say hey you know what's going on what can I do dad starts telling the officer uh something as I heard it you know I'm not recording this call because this call was already with Doug, and I don't record the phone calls with Doug, so everybody knows that, unless I have Doug's permission, because he's a friend, and he asked me to do that because of his position, so everybody knows. So when Dad was calling me, and I answered, I didn't have that on recording, so I can't go, you know, showing that. Doug was helping me, what he was trying to help me with, and I don't have the assistance from showing that Dad was telling the officer what I remember hearing, so you had to go off what I say. Um, that Dad was telling the officer, well, he's a threat to himself and all this stuff. He can't cross the streets. Can you put him on 941 and stuff? And the Amherst cop said, no, I can't, uh, because he's not a threat to himself. He's not a threat to others. But if we can't get him 
uh, to the hospital or somewhere safe, we will then put him on 941 if he's not cooperating. I heard the call officer say that. Thank you, Amherst Police, for helping me and looking out for my safety. And yes, I would have gone to a different hospital if you had said suggested it. But he did suggest it, but I didn't know what to do. F because I need my APS worker and dad to help me. So number three. Dad says, oh, can you take Andy to the, uh, see his mom? He's right behind the hospital, you know. So that was the plan. They take me over there. They walk in there to make sure that they were willing to accept me. Because they don't want to just put me in danger. And they said that. They explained that to the lady that, you know, he was discharged. They do it all the time to him. We're always trying to help him. We don't know what to do. His dad, his his dad, who's the caregiver of me, uh, had asked to, um, for me to visit my mom while he comes in to fix me up. It will only be half an hour. Well, thank God, the cops. Thank God, the nursing home refused me because they said that I cannot take care of myself. So you guys know. I had issues with my diabetes there on two times visiting my mom. And the one time I was left out in the car for uh, after my fair hearing. And I was expecting uh, to go home. Right. And then dad had to bring mom to the nursing home. Uh, go with my mom to the doctor's appointment. And then bring mom uh, back. Even though mom got a wheelchair van. Dad still had to go with mom. Right. And... I didn't know dad had to do that, but the time, but the issue was I was getting low and I had no way of getting anything to eat. So one of the workers bought me a Mountain Dew out of his own money, out of their work vending machine. And yeah, thank you. Awesome. I really appreciate it. And then dad, there was another time that I got low and I was telling dad and I was visiting my mom. And because dad was saying that mom's not getting the help she needed, that they weren't treating her right and, and giving her the care and stuff. And I go there and I see completely different. So you guys know. And dad was twisting what was actually happening versus uh, what was actually. Uh, he was twisting what was not happening that he was thinking that was happening that I ended up going to see for myself and I wanted to see if mom's getting help and care that she needed and I wanted to do that because I I wanted to see if my mom is okay that's why I don't like going there because you gotta wear a mask right my sensory issue so that there was a time where I got low and I went to see my mom to help my dad with advocating for what's going on to find out dad is completely wrong he misunderstand and twisted everything. Because he made it sound like he w she wasn't getting the care. She was being discharged. And no, 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 dad. So I, you know, explain what's going on, right? I see her, what dad, uh, the nursing home says and what dad's saying. And I say, dad, see, they're not discharging her. They are helping her. They want to help her. Mom's getting the care she needs. Well, long story short, I visit my mom with dad, and it ended up being there longer than dad would usually be because dad wanted to make sure mom was getting the care that she needed. He was panicky about it. Well, because what he was saying, I was worried, and I wanted to make sure. I want to help my mom. I want to be her voice like she was my voice. I can't do it on my own, and I need dad's help. I can't make decisions on my own. But I can at least be there to help dad and advocate for dad. And that's what I did. And I got low blood sugar and dad got upset because I needed help eating. It was, we didn't eat lunch that day. And I felt really crummy. And I walked out because dad wasn't wanting to help me. So I went to try to do it on my own. So Joe and dad has no right to say, you aren't doing any things yourself. You're not trying. I did try to get my own food, and Dad gave me a hard time. I even called Dad. I said, Dad, I'm, uh, well, you didn't believe me. I'm walking out. Well, I'm already uh, down the street. And you were saying, oh, good. I said, if I get hit by a car, who's going to help me? What's going to happen then? I have trouble crossing the street. Well, you shouldn't have left there. And I said, well, Dad, I can't help it. I was asking you for help. 
I'm covering my ears with that beep. Um, and I asked Dad, Hey, Dad, I'm asking for help, and you weren't helping me. And he said, well, I'll just use the same time when a police who says he can cross the street and it's safe for you and everything, and you, and you, and you won't, um, you know, all this stuff, right? He'll use the same time when a police who says, uh, that I can cross the street, don't need any help, I'll let, let, let Tiny Lavi know, right? I'll use, uh, and tell Amherst Police that you are capable of doing it, you're faking and so well, I have that conversation on recording. I posted that on YouTube earlier. So anyway, second thing, what happens? Dad got upset because he came right away to come get me. Well, why did you just come get me and not say that you're coming to get me, Dad? You show up unexpectedly by calling me, asking me where I'm at. I and I'm not expecting you to come get me because you said you don't want to do it. Well... This is the problem I'm having with dad. This is causes the behavior and emotional issues. Well, I had issues today, again with dad, that resulted in police visits, two of them. Dad and Joe insist that I refuse help here. Well, let me pause because I don't want to share my phone number with my HHS complaint that I updated. Let me pause. Sorry, actually, I, I just realized that I'm going to have help by my caseworker through Unifera to help me write the complaint to HHS. Look, the education material says, what? I wasn't there for that. Was not there for that. That's fraud. That is medical fraud. That's medical abuse. They diagnosed me with something that they weren't even treating me. This is what they were treating me for. And this. Oh, wow. Am I refusing help? Or what? I'm refusing my diagnosis, right, Joanne and Joe? By the way, Joe claims that he talks to Joanne all the time, who says, I'm refusing help. I'm refusing my diagnosis, like he has always said. Like she has always said. Well, when I verify that, so Joanne knows that uh, uh, that she was right. The last time I talked to Joanne was upset because Joe was saying, I'm refusing help and all this other stuff, right? Well, Joanne, I did not realize that you are right. You did not talk to Joe. You haven't talked to Joe. But Joe continues to be delusional to want to control the situation by saying, what he wants to believe. That I refused help and placement. And I would have been placed years ago. If I would just cooperate. Guys. I've shared my office and mental health reports. And everything. Why I've denied help. To know that I'm not refusing it. I'm asking for that help. And here's that proof. Time and time again. I asked for help. You know guys. I didn't. I recorded the entire visit at the hospital. The entire visit. Except for maybe here and there when I made a phone call. Like last night I made a phone call to my... Well, a, a Facebook call to my friend Dan. Um, uh, oh, after Dad came to see me. Right? Well, anyways, Dan, um, you know, we were talking and stuff. But if you look... I did not leave against that medical advice. I was discharged. But my dad and brother says I left AMA. I left AMA. If I'm discharged. If I'm discharged. And I'm deemed to have capacity according to the hospital. Then it's not AMA. And I also want you to know. That says that right there. And I want you to know. The Amherst Police also has that on body cam. That I was discharged. Because they asked. Did I have capacity? Because they just The security guard said. I just up to left. And against medical advice. I know that because. I also was right there. I was on the phone call. With, my, uh, with someone I forgot who. And then I had to call dad. And. The 
Amherst police officer said, well, if he was discharged, that is not against medical advice. Does he have capacity to make that decision? And the, uh, the security guard said, yes. He does. He comes here all the time and does this all the time. And the uh, Amherst cop said, well, then it's not against medical advice if he just walked out of here. I have that body cam. I'm going to Amherst police. I asked Henry to also get the report. And I had the police report number, and I'm asking Amherst Police to help accommodate me because I can't get there safely, and I know my dad is going to refuse to help me. So I can go fighting it with my insurance. If you see, there's a lot of the, uh, issues, like they treat me for cardiac issues, or it says I have cardiac issues, but it basically says something totally different. Unable to care for myself, and love against medical voice, which... If I can't care for myself, why aren't they helping me? They're expecting my dad to help me. And they're blaming me. They're blaming me, quote unquote, for refusing help. So I didn't want to come back to dad's house. Well, you're going to hear that the doctor also accuses dad for not returning phone calls and refusing me help. But let's go right to this because my brother, Joe, seems to think that I'm refusing help. Well, I had to update my HHS complaint. And I'm going to pause so I don't go accidentally showing it. Because I have my phone number in the email. Let me pause. So this is my email to the HHS because I had a previous complaint with the HHS about similar issues. Don't worry, I have my AEC uh, app that I used at one point uh, during my visit, and I was denied it. I was ignored, and I just was patiently asking. What happened was, they were not allowing me to have diapers. Okay? I'm in cotton it. But they allowed me to have at least a pull-up after me getting upset. And needing help with it, right? Because I came in with a diaper. I showed my medical order. So the nurse gave me a pull-up. They don't have diapers unless the doctor orders it or allows it. Which is bullshit because I know they have them. But they claim that they don't have them. They'll try to figure it out if they can get one from me. Okay. So the hospital was neglecting my care. They'll give me a pull-up. Okay, great. So I go to bed. Well, I wet through the pull-up at night, and I had no help changing my diaper, knowing if I was wet or knowing if I had an uh, accident too. I actually leaked out. Can't help. They refused me my DDAVP for the bed wetting to slow down the wedding for one. For two, I can't help that I had a pull-up on that doesn't keep me dry. And three, can't help. It leaked through. It got the bed soiled. Well, I waited for over an hour to get it taken care of and cleaned up. Kept telling them. So I used my AEC app. Oh, they waited for an hour for me. So I have it on recording. I got frustrated. I So I used my AEC app. So I didn't get upset. I asked the nurse who tested my blood sugar. With my AEC app, I wet the bed and I need help. She said, I'll get your nurse, honey. Well, two hours later, I'm standing up, eating my breakfast, and I'm hurting because my back is bothering me. Right? And I explained that. I'm hurting. It's hurting me standing here. I need help. I just used my AC up again. I was ignored. And I said, look, I need help. I'm talking to you. I'll get your nurse. I'm sorry, but when I use my talker, I'm talking to you. Don't ignore me. And I explained to him, I made a good point with the HHS before, and I'm walking out because you don't want to help me and all this other stuff. Right? Well, long story short, they then said, oh, no, don't do it. I was just busy helping you all this. Well, I need help, too. Yeah, but these people are sick of me. I said, well, yeah, I understand that. But you can't just, you didn't help me understand it. I need help with my hygiene. I'm in cotton it. I can't do it without having help. 
So she finally helped me because I was ready to walk out. She calmed me down and I misunderstood and I felt bad about it, right? That's not the point. I'm not even going to show you this recording right here first. I want you to know something real quick. Let me pause. So this is why I went to the hospital for right here. I hurt my head because my dad paused. So I have these accommodations I requested. I typed these out because they're on, you know, my speech reports and things like that. And I just want to help. I don't want to have a behavior issue. So I asked for help because I can't use it on my own. I need accommodations. I asked for this. I gave it to him at my uh, mission. And uh, throughout my visit, each nursing each nursing visit or time they came in to visit me, I gave them that. I gave them this. I gave them the reason why I'm there. Alright, so they can help me. Oh, there was too much, like, work to read. And I am going to let you know that I also had this here. Explaining I have no services. I need help. I cannot take care of myself. And I also brought this. And I also brought my civil rights complaint and everything. So they're well aware. They just didn't read the civil rights complaint. I had all ready for them to look. They had a whole team willing to help me. Oh, really? They had a whole team willing to help me. But they're not wanting to communicate with me or help me so I can have the accommodations, right? Oh, by the way, I even bring uh, my, you know, speech assessment. So, after I left Diversify in January because I was expecting to get placement and this same bullshit happens... I called them asking them, how do I get accommodations for, again, to help me understand what I need to do? So I was told to bring my accommodation plan, my crisis plan, and this here. And I was asked to bring my speech assessment. The one from Buffalo Hearing Speech Center was what I was asked to bring. The Diversify Auditory Processing. Oops, sorry. Right, and the one of uh, the speech assessment that was my last one in November. Let me get that one. Um, okay. Oh, by the way, Amy's not my speech therapist name. I never had a speech therapist named Amy. Yeah, I know that there's a medical error in this, but my the speech therapist fixed that error. His dad never sexually abused me, and I'm not going to just lie about it, because it never happened. You see, I have safety issues here. Oh, wait. You're going to try to tell me this. So I'm aware, because of speech therapy, what I need help with and why. I'm masking my disability. I'm hiding my disability. I've been told this over and over again. Well, because I know that, I also bring this report here. Bits and pieces about my aggressive behaviors or what causes them. My autism. My cognitive issues. There's no hallucinations. No mood liability. No um, depression. Mania. No psychosis. I'm not hearing voices. I'm not saying things. I'm not delusional. But my autism, the sensory issues, the, the stress tolerance issue, the communication skills. See what I'm going through here. I can't help APS refuse to help me with this hospital to have a safe discharge. They were saying dad's house is safe. Funny when I make complaints, it all changes. Hmm. It just really does. So, this is all done here. But now I want to pause because I asked for that help. 
you may not know this. Let me pause this again. You may not know that I I advocated for myself calmly without having any issues. Didn't need my AC at that point. And they were going to discharge me back to dad's house. But then I told them what I'm going through and everything. And they said, okay, we'll talk about it. We'll try to get as far as how it helps. Well, I asked my nurse for a Benadryl. Well, I was waiting for her Benadryl to give me, which took an hour and a half. I have it on tape, every day, bit of it. I wrote this out. Use my AC app. Because I was having trouble communicating at that point. I was stressed out. Let's read this a little bit. I'm asking for help. Why am I asking for help? Because I am frustrated. I'm going to need help. So I don't have a behavior issue. I know I have these behavior issues. I'm aware of what causes my behavior issues. And I'm asking for assistance and accommodations. Wait a minute, guys. They said they were going to help me. Right? They were going to give me those accommodations. Right? Let me pause. Because you're going to hear me panicking. And I'm going to play a part of what I was doing. So while I was waiting patiently for my nurse to bring me my Benadryl. I was playing the Beatles music to try to relax. While I was playing, uh, doing this. I also had a really bad migraine this morning. A really, really, really painful one. I had to get off my phone because I was playing chess. I was on a winning streak. And I was trying to ignore the headache. Well, I find out that my migraine was caused by the head injury. So you guys know. That I had over the weekend. I'm having a headache now. Because I'm on screen time right now. But I'm not using my mind like playing chess. But guys. I was on a roll. Power. Or um, Paw Patrol on a roll. Yeah. I was really winning. I was winning. A, I was on a winning streak. I had my last game. I could not take the pain at that point. It was so painful. I couldn't even finish it. I was winning, but I lost the game. I don't want to show you. I'll show you maybe later, but on the history, but hey. So my nurse gave me Tylenol. I closed my eyes. She closed the drapes. I had it helped me calm down because I was really upset. I was really in pain. Well, she helped me through it. Guess what? Then I get the news that, oh, actually, then I realized that I was in a wet diaper. I didn't know it, right? I just went to the bathroom to try to clean my glasses because I thought maybe that had something to do with it because they were dirty. You know, I didn't have anything to really clean it with, so I did it. That's what Dad was told to do, to wipe it down, uh, get it wet, and let it air dry. I did that. Well, it didn't really work very well. It, it was better than it was, so thank you, Dad, for saying that. But I want to just point out to you guys that I got a little better and I was a little better and I had to deal with this discharge that they wanted to do. Let me pause. So I don't go showing you all this uh, for copyright issues. Using this with my coping skills, right? I can't. Okay. So they're discharging me. It's discharge. I was discharged. Hear that? I was discharged. I was discharged. So, Joe, you are wrong. You were wrong for me refusing help. You know why I was wrong for that? What you do? I'm sorry. Do you? I got the pronouns reversed. Do you know why you are wrong? Because I just shared with you that I was discharged, and I know you don't want to hear it. 
but I was discharged. Right here, unable to care for herself. Left against medical voice. No, I was discharged. Let's finish. After I already advocated and was calm and was super happy with myself for being able to remain calm with something I find hard for me because I'm left alone to advocate for myself. By the way, thank you, Doug Usiak, for helping me with some of the words that I was able to repeat. I just could not repeat this part at this point here, but I will repeat it now that I'm calm. Uh, it is easy to put blame on me for so-called refusing help or, you know, it, that kind of stuff, right? So easy to say that I am refusing help. I have a communication problem like dad and sisters I have. I have autism. I'm incompetent. I can't take care of myself. I have behavior issues because of my disability. I'm in diapers. I have I arm flap. I rock. I spin myself. I pee and poop myself. I need all this help. I hit my head. I have behavior issues because dad doesn't want to help me. I have behavior issues because dad wants to exaggerate things, which we'll get into a little bit later. That'll be part two of my recording. But here. Joe and Dad insist that I'm refusing help, right? Well, if Millifemur Suburban Hospital is not refusing me help, then what is this? I get it. This is, says I love against medical advice, but it also says I was discharged. I'm discharged. It also says that I'm being uh, treated for something totally unrelated for what I came in there for, based on my discharge instructions. So you can see there's inaccuracies there. There's nothing about my blood pressure being high because it was actually good. There was nothing about me having any other cardiac issues. They never did an EKG. So why are they saying that? See, what I'm pointing out here is medical fraud. Medical waste. I ask for the help so I don't have the behavior issues. Joe accuses me for not doing the things that I need to get to help myself. No, Joe. I'm asking for the help. I'm being denied it. The whole reason why I'm putting this out here for is because... The, well, the way I'm doing it this way. Because I was going to do it from the first video that I was going to show you the, uh, earlier in the recording, right? And then I was going to show you this one after, to sh keep it in line, because this one happened after. The only reason why I split up the recording is because I wanted to make it easier for me. So when I was playing the Beatles on my phone, I wouldn't have been... I would not have been... um. Copyrighted, it would have been easier for me to find where I left off. But I immediately stopped the recording and started a new one. It's not just I started it in the middle of a conversation for not getting my way. I recorded it all. Everything. Like I've been doing when I go to a hospital. It's my only way of showing what I'm going through. If you don't like it as a doctor or hospital being recorded like this, then don't do this to me. It's fraud, it's medical abuse, it's neglect, it's negligence. I ask you for help so I don't have the behavior issues. I can't do it on my own. I'm asking you for help for that reason. I'm aware of it, that I can't do it on my own. I bring you medical documentation to show you, so, but you ignored it. You didn't want to read it. It was too much like work, which is a violation of my right to access to services. And then I get yelled at for having behavior issues. Hey, at least, at least, guys, that my civil rights complaint stops the doctors from saying I'm being manipulative and controlling of my disability to get what I want to get help. Because I'm not being that way on purpose. At least when I had paper, I made the request to get my records fixed. But you still do the same bullshit. 
The only thing is, you're going to get away with it this time. You're not going to fix those records because I can't have paper because my caregiver is denying me that. So I can't follow what my lawyers have been telling me. You think I'm fucking lying about the lawyers too? I'm not going to go show them my, uh, the legal support documents that was given by uh, Disability Rights New York. I'm not going to show you what Neighborhood Legal Services did to help me with making records requests to be changed. My dad doesn't believe me that these hospitals have to do that for me. But here, I have Horizons who made amendment to my documents that they made mistakes on by saying I have schizophrenia when I don't have any symptoms of it. And Dr. Naylor did not make that diagnosis either, and I asked the Horizons to fix it and correct it. Oh, yeah. That's right. They stated in my records, I don't have psychosis. I'm not observed having it. I don't have a depression. They put that in writing, the psychiatrist and my counselor, Ryan, did. But yet, they still made the diagnosis of it. But yet, stated... That they I didn't have any symptoms or wasn't on any medications. Well, how can I have the diagnosis of schizophrenia or schizoaffective disorder if I don't have the symptoms of it? See what I'm trying to get at here, right? They made the fixing, the correcting errors. Dad would got a phone call that he has a call back to help me on. To get those those corrected records so I can go back to Ototo with them. Because I appealed my 2020 fair hearing with the advice of Disability Rights New York. I then go making that request. I submitted the information. I'm waiting for it to hear back from Ototo on the, uh, the mistrial. While I'm waiting, I also appealed their denial for helping me through the Article 78 hearing. Waiting to hear back from Disability Rights New York about that one from my 2023 fair hearing. In the meantime, I need some help getting downtown for that. But Henry tells me today, I don't need to do any of that because I don't have capacity now. My doctor is to deem, deem that I need Article 17A because of my autism and intellectual disability. I... Yeah. Okay. So we spoke with your outpatient doctor. Okay. He's aware of everything going on. I know okay. he's working hard to try to, you know, help you with all your accommodations that you okay. have requested. Yeah. So we open continue to do that with him. Okay. We'll see him within a week. You may see okay. him follow up appointment. Okay. Um, but yeah, otherwise we'll get you out of here. Why can't you help me? So we're in the hospital. We, you know, this is acute when people are very sick. Yeah. I understand that you have Okay. Well, they're discriminating against me. You know why? Because the Department of Health states that they have to help me with a safe discharge. How do I know that? Because it's on the Department of Health website. All this information is off of the Department of Health website. Of course, I forgot to share the URL until the end. But look, it's right here, guys. Right here. All that information is copied and pasted in here. All of this here. So, when you see the first line, initial discharge screening, right? Let's see here. What consumers need to know, uh, discharge plan, okay, um, discharge coordination, uh, initial discharge screen right here, guys. Wait a minute, guys. Impair memory, impair self-care, multiple diagnosed comorbidity, poor cognitive issues, Homelessness because I'm being abused and neglected. I have nowhere else to go. Poor social supports, chronic illnesses, in and out of the hospital. 
yeah, I have a right to a safe discharge, people. All that is from this website right here. Oh, by the way, I need to put in these quotes where I responded to it. So it's so I could separate it between the two. I did nothing more besides uh, say I don't have any assistance. So, therefore, I brought all, I did all everything I could do to get the help I needed. There is a medical need for me being there. I have diabetes. I'm incontinent. I can't take care of myself. And I have a skin issue, which is part of my incontinent issue. Because the hospital failed to provide me diapers that kept me dry and they kept me in a wet bed all the time. Hey. You have to continue to work on outpatient, not in the hospital. Can you help me get services at home? So, so you're going to work on this with your doctor, outpatient, not in the hospital. Okay. okay. But what about my medications and the behaviors that I have at home? So, so as I just said, you're going to continue to work with us with Dr. Frederick. Okay. And he's going to help me? Yeah. So you're passing me on because of my behavior issues? No, we're and just, you're not supposed to be in the hospital. This is where sick people are. That we're, you know, you're, you're not supposed to be in the hospital is what she said. Wait until you hear the recording of the security guard telling Amherst police why I'm not allowed in, in the hospital. Because you will see that I'm being discriminated against because of my... Disability. Wait until you hear the first part of this recording that I recorded, uh, you know, before this one. Um, where the doctor says, Dad was a cooperating, making, returning the phone calls and stuff. His dad argues that one. You can leave the hospital. There's nothing that we're really doing for you Is here. Is there any other place for me to go? So you're, you can go home, where we spoke with the doctor, they said you have services at home. I do? Help you, yes? Really? Yes. And you what have that services? ADS worker that is following you. What? And I, have a, I have services here at home. Do you see any services? Do you have, hear any services? No. I have speech and ODPT that dad refuses to follow the medical orders for. That's the whole reason why I'm in the hospital, because Dad fights me. Services at home. What services at home? What services? Yes, worker, that you can go home, where we spoke with the doctor, they said you have services at home. I do. help you, yes? Really? Yes, and you have that yes worker that is following you and trying to help you. What services at home? What services at home? So can I go somewhere go. else then? So yeah, so you can either go home, or we can take you to this crisis. What is this crisis? So you can either go to a shelter. And they will send me right back to the hospital. I already know. Or you can go to, um, we can get you right down to social services. And they will send me right back to the hospital. So yeah, okay. You have no medical, medical need to be in the hospital. Okay, okay then send me to a shelter, Demi, because they'll just send me right back out. And you know that. And then what happens? I mean, seriously, I can't take care of myself. A shelter cannot accommodate my medical needs. There's nothing that we can do for you here, though, either. Okay? Oh, yeah, but you're saying that I can go, just go die, right? Let me show you something that I can repeat, and I can show you the the, the denial notice is from DSS Department of Social Services, by the way, that states this law number that I'm going to show you right here, guys. This is why I'm not able to go to a shelter, guys. Okay. Harbor House told the city of Taiwan police the one time last week, I need to go to the hospital, like DeGraff or Buffalo General or something, to get this hospital. So let me refresh. 
Um, internet stopped working. <sighs> Let me pause into this world. Somehow the internet got turned off all of a sudden, and and I'm waiting for it to get back on. I didn't do anything about it, and I got my earmuffs on, so I don't have to deal with anything to respond. I want to try to remain calm and not have issues, but somebody wants to start with things with me. And I'm just trying to do everything I can do just to stay calm. So I turned on my mobile hotspot on my phone. So here is the city missions medical bed, right? And this is the so-called form. Oops. Hang on, let me pause again. So Harbor House is um recommendation of city mission and uh medical bed you have to go to a hospital to be then discharged to it right like for example i was at clotter hospital they could have sent me here right you can't just go to dss for this you have to they have to just set it up right one of the things that you have to be able to do is Exit the building if you need, if you can, on your own when there's an emergency. I can't do that without having assistance. That first check is not there. It's no. I have trouble managing my incontinence and changing my diaper on my own because I need help when to change. And I need constant reminders and assistance with that. So I need help with that. And then I also need help with taking my medicines. I need a reminder. I cannot test my blood sugar on my own. Okay. And I need some help with making my bed. See, my point here is they were going to put me in a shelter, but there is no shelter option for me. See my point here, guys? Because I definitely do. So there's nothing you can do besides let, expect me to go get hit by a car, starve, or die, right? I can't even shop on my own. I want to go to shelter because that way there I can sue for malpractice. By the way, I had I had waited for my Benadryl they never gave me, and I had this all set up for me. By the way, why am I so clear-minded today? Maybe because I'm on my medication because the hospital helped me with that. I don't get that help from dad. Because I don't feel safe going back home. I want to go to a shelter, please. Okay. You think I fake my disability back home? I want to go to a shelter, please. Okay. You I think I fake my disability? That's my choice. No, nobody's accusing no, you. No, you're think okay. no, you, you think you're 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 you're, you're expecting up, okay? you're expecting me. You know. So they said you can take care of yourself. You can make your own decisions. They said that. Then why did you say I can't? It makes it sound like you're lying, especially when all the other issues. I can't issues. even shop on my own. I want to go to shelter because that way there I can sue for malpractice. Because I don't feel safe going back home. I want to go to a shelter, please. You think I fake my disability? That's my choice. No, you're think you think you're you're you're, you're expecting you're expecting me. You can take care of yourself, okay? I was, everything's all set up. You know, I'll just walk out of here, okay? Because that's what you guys say I can do. They don't want to help me. Do you see anybody helping me here? No. I'm asking for that help. And by the way, this is going to be part of my HHS complaint that my insurance is going to help me file because Doug's on vacation. And the other person that was helping me is no longer able to help me. 
because he feels I don't have capacity. That's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna go. I'll I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go, I'll I'll go, go run away okay? because you don't think you, I need any help. No, we do not want to know you don't think I need any help. Safe. I don't need any help taking my medicine for stuff. Hold on, honey. I'm going to get my clothes. Okay. I'm leaving because I have the right to hold So Dad and Joe knows I was asking for help. I was denied it. I'm not refusing help. I never refused in tandem either. But this is what these medical professionals have been doing. Watch my earlier video. I posted on a tandem. On their refusing to help me. But yet Dad insists that I'm refusing help. Joe insists I'm refusing help. No. I have it on recording. I'm begging for the help. And Tandem said that uh, because of my diagnosis, they can't help me. But then they're using it against me. They can't help me until I'm OPW eligible, is what they why they can't help me. My dad seems to think that I'm refusing help. They're help offered. No, I'm not. But a Tandem uses my diagnosis to say, you're refusing our help. No, because they were supposed to put me in touch with... An OPWD caseworker that of theirs. That's the whole reason why I'm not posting the videos of the full conversations. I'm post. I did post a conversation where Dad lied and made up shit like Schofield is a mental health provider. I have counseling and all this. Well, that's why Dad doesn't want me to have paper because I printed stuff out for him to look at. Because he likes to exaggerate and make it harder for me to get diagnosed and help. Because he likes to keep changing things. And I wanted him to see what is making it harder for me to get help. By the way, Dad's been saying that you want out of here so bad, then just leave. Well, okay, fine. But you don't want me to leave, Dad, because you won't answer your phone when the doctors call you. You won't help me with telling the actual truth of things. And that's just the part I'm having a hard time. Wait until part two of this video because I'll do the timeline of everything I've been going through today. Since I came home. We can ask somebody to pick this up. I can't care about it. And I'm a great reason you can't stop me if you can discharge. I want somebody to pick this up because you say I'm safe. And you'll follow up with him. Okay, you say I'm safe. I don't want to talk if you're discriminating against me because I can't take care of myself and you know that. Okay, so. I'm going to have you guys to have my father pick this up and I'm leaving. You can't stop me. If you don't want to help me with my medicines, I have no one to take my help me with my medications. I have no one to help me with my personal care. I have a hard time taking a shower and you fucking dis discriminate against me. Have my someone else pick up my shit. I can't get it all. How do you get out of here? How do you get out of here? Okay. Look, they said that I can make my own decisions. They said I can take care of myself. I don't need any assistance. You hear it right there, people. You hear it right there, people. But why did they say differently? It makes no sense. It confuses me. And I don't have a way to make a request for them to change this error. Because dad won't let me paper. Oh, by the way, all these allergies, they have no record of anything. Except for this one here that Niagara Falls Memorial tried to give me. They have no thing here, and I don't even know what medicine that is. And... 
I don't know what this one is either. See what I'm trying to get at here, guys. Oh, by the way, they have these here. But they're putting numbers after it. It's like, they don't believe me I'm allergic to Respiradol and Tramadol. Well, Tramadol is a pain med. NSAIDs. They don't believe me. I get GI bleeds whenever I take an NSAID. Hmm. I lied about not having a GI bleed because I've been taking ibuprofen, but I'm out of it now. I'm back home. I have to look for the ibuprofen bottle that I found because Dad did a lot of cleaning. But... I don't care if I have a GA bleed. You know why? Because I hurt. My back is hurting me a lot. I don't get Dad's help putting on my back cream. No, I don't. I'm going. I'm going. Huh? You don't have the ring. That's the first. Okay. Okay. I fake, and I don't even know how to get out of there. I have this all on recording, and I can't take care of myself. You know that. I have this all on recording. Please have my dad get that stuff since he want me to get hit by a car. He don't think I need any help with anything. Since he don't think I need any help with anything, I'm going to run away and he can't fucking stop me. I want to go. I want to go, please. I want to go because you say I think I don't need any fucking help. I want to go, please. I'm going and you can't stop me because you are not helping me. You don't want to help me. I want to go. I want to go. I don't want to go anywhere, so I'm just going to sleep in a park benches. You don't want to help me. I'm not able to cross street safely. I can't take care of myself. And I'm scared. I want to go, please. I want to please go, and I don't want anything else. I want to go, because you think I think. You think I know how to do this on my own, and I want to go. You don't think you seriously. I don't want to be here anymore. You don't want to help me. I don't want your help, because you think I'm safe, okay? You don't want to help me in my medical care. I cannot take care of myself. And you don't think me seriously. I can't do it on my own, and I have no one helping me. What's your name? You said that I could take care of myself. You said I don't need any help. You refused me help. Why are you trying to be so concerned and trying to help me? Oh, so you don't get in trouble because you don't agree with the discharge. I got it. I don't want to. I'm going. On. You don't have to help me. Okay. You, you, okay. I want to go. I'm just showing you. I'm just showing you. This one. It's okay. A nurse can actually get sued for malpractice too for not sticking up for me. I don't care. You don't want to do anything to help me. I don't want your help. You had your chance. I can't take care of my. A nurse is also able to be sued for not helping incontinent people and giving skin rashes. Maybe I'll give my nighttime nurse a, a malpractice case against her because she allowed me to have outside medications. I know you can't have outside medications when you when you're an inpatient. You know why I know? Because my mom told me. I'm on four sprays of DDAVP each night. Not one. They only wanted to give me one. No, my dear, not allowing me to get help with my medical care. It's discrimination and I'm going to the House of Human Services. I'm in the meltdown. You can tell how I'm talking here. Okay, I'm in a panic attack too. I'm running away here because I'm scared. I don't want to have a meltdown. I don't 
want to get hurt. I don't want to hurt myself. I don't want to hurt others. Well, let's just wait till the HHS to hear this whole thing. Because it shows that I almost got hit by a car. Like I was saying. Let me pause. So this is the recording right here. If you see, I'm recording after this morning's incident of having a wet bed and having no help cleaning it up yet again. Oh, oh, no, no, no. It was actually seeing the shrink rather than that. So you guys know the shrink said that I need to be placed. It was not a safe discharge. I can't take care of myself. And I needed residential placement. And that she was great range testing and stuff like that. Then why did you guys? Then why did you guys discharge me? I wish to God I had that fucking uh witch doctor. I'll call her because she's a shrink. No, I'm just being disrespectful on purpose here, because I dealt with her before three times at that same hospital. By the way, let's go back looking at something real quick. So I'm refusing help, as my brother claims. I'm refusing all this help, Joseph Ditch claims, which is not the reason why I'm posting this, but I'm calling him out. Calling out Millifer Moore Suburban Hospital for this. Look, so this is August 2020. This is on, so these pictures that I'm going to show you are all on the left thigh. This is in November. This is in January. I'm at Millifer Suburban Hospital in the care of a hospital. Trash Panda, go ahead, look at this. This got worse. And I'm in the care of the hospital. Okay, I didn't take a picture of this leg after the IV antibiotics. I probably should have. This is the right thigh. Right here. The whole reason why I have this skin infection for is because the, pl the plastic back diapers, for whatever reason, tend to not leak as much. And when they do leak pee, the outside of the diaper does not stay wet. Remember that. The cloth back diaper does. The cloth back diaper also does not absorb the sweat and keeps the sweat inside or on the outside of the diaper. Because I also sweat too much. This is caused because the moisture... The heat and the friction. This is not a diaper rash. I don't just sit in a wet diaper all day to give myself this. I need help with when to change. I used to have that help at McDonald's and Wendy's and at home. My dad doesn't want to help me with that since 2014. No, no, and since 2018, right before. I met my dad's sister at Walmart who saw dad refusing to help me with my medicines and shit. When things really started going downhill. I always wore plastic back diapers even though I never once liked them. I don't like the way they feel. But there are more... They're not going to give me the skin irritation like cloth back diapers do. So, this is in October. Again, right before getting out, uh, going to the hospital. By the way, if Miller Film or Suburban Hospital was helping me, you're going to see this. If ECMC was helping me, you're going to see this. You're wrong. You're a liar. You weren't helping me with the appropriate antibiotics. You missed that there was also a fungal infection, so I wasn't getting the fungal infection treated or the bacteria infection. And you were only giving me an antibiotic. One doctor would give me an antibiotic and then take me off of that antibiotic and put me on a different one. And then this doctor put me on this one, that one, that did this. Pretty soon, I, I can't take my antibiotic already on my own. I need the constant reminders. But these idiots don't think I need any help. And 
when I was homeless because I used my oil diffuser and medical device, quote unquote, I got arrested. Remember that one? Guess what happened? I have issues. Because I had nowhere to go. My dad didn't allow me to have diapers uh, of mine. I had with a without home. My dad is my payee. He was refusing to pay for a shelter out of my money. And that was his responsibility as my payee. So everybody now knows. I didn't just go getting in a hotel room because I needed my father to do it for me. When he finally was willing to place uh, buy a hotel room at the uh, um, Scottish Inn on Sheridan Drive. And then he used the rest of the money for DSS because that was the workaround. That's the workaround from this law number is for my payee to pay for a hotel room to then use the money that uh, from DSS to uh, then to use the money uh, for my basic needs and housing. And when I run out of money is then when I can go get DSS to pay for the remainder of my stay. That way there, DSS did not take a liability of my skin infections or getting hit by a car. APS was refusing to help me. APS is in the same building. Don't worry, we're getting this fixed. Inner tie. Issue. So I, at this time, had the appropriate diapers. By the way, the reason why I had these diapers here for is because LL Medco was out of the white diaper. The better dry. So I had to buy crinkles. These are the these are the diapers that I don't need a booster insert. I don't have skin issues and I don't have leaks as much. Almost never. Of course when I don't feel the when it's wet I had to go change is part of why I'm you know having issues. I have a sensory processing issue, which is why I have a hard time recognizing when I'm wet. I'm always in a diaper. Diapers are hot and sweaty. So you're already wet anyways because of your sweat. So it's hard for me to realize when I'm wet. So this, so this is in October. This is how bad it got. I, APS at this point wasn't even providing me diapers. And they were my payee, even with a medical prescription. Look how sore that is. So this is when uh, Miller Fillmore Suburban Hospital admitted me. This was right when they started IV antibiotics. This is as it's starting to get better in December. This is mid-December when it started getting worse. When they took me off the IV antibiotics and put me on the oral. Look at it. It started getting worse here. I'm in the hospital, idiots. And here. Before uh, uh, infection got worse while in the hospital, I'm showing you Miller Fillmore Suburban Hospital was neglecting my medical care because this got worse again. They evaluated me why I have a hard time taking a shower, but then they didn't do anything to help me take a shower. See my point here. I was not getting the help I needed, and they stated that I'm refusing help. Look, I'm in Sister's Hospital and I took that picture. Look, I'm in Sister's Hospital at this point. Look, I will admit it's getting better here in this picture here. You know why? Sister's Hospital keeps me on the same antibiotic that Millifilmore had me on three of them, at, uh, three oral antibiotics at once. But they also put me on an antifungal uh, powder and I need and they also took away the diapers that the independent living center paid for so these are the diapers that independent living center paid for because APS refused to help me 
And I needed a special diaper for my incontinence because of my skin issue. Sisters Hospital took away my diapers. They took away my diapers so I couldn't go changing on my own. They did not allow me to go shower at all on my own. Remember when I fell and I hurt my ankle at Middle of Fillmore Hospital? And they refused me help and how mom said I'm just having sympathy pain for my dad who broke his ankle. At the time I had no idea that was even done. I never knew my dad broke his ankle. And I showed that conversation with the hospital to mom and mom didn't like it. I didn't see that. Yes, he did, mom. Just like you lied about why you were refusing your doctor to come to your house, Mom. And you got discharged and you blamed me for it. And I called you out on that lie and I posted that on YouTube. See, guys, I have this here. It's getting better because they're changing my diaper, they're washing me. I get made fun of at Middle Fimmer Suburban Hospital, denied that help, even though they stated I needed that help to getting this. I didn't like that. I wanted to be, be able to do it on my own with help, but they didn't allow me to do that. So I refused Miller, uh, Sisters Hospital. I signed out AMA. I got a hotel room out of my gift card that Joe got me for Christmas that year. Yeah, I didn't want to be diaper change. I didn't want to be that. Yeah, at this point, I had some, you know, rash issues, but I wasn't getting the proper hygiene assistance at, you know, because I need assistance. I mean, this skin infection went on so long because I wasn't getting the help. And then in the care of Miller Fillmore Hospital, I didn't get help. By the way, this is part of my civil rights complaint. And I feel I'm being retaliated at this point. Guys, listen, listen to how calm I am. You saw I got upset and walked out and, and, and left. You hear me asking for help and stating why I'm calm. You know why? Because Doug Usiak had worked with me for two months with similar words that I'm, going, that I'm saying here. You know something else? I'll pause for a second. So, I don't know how to explain this to you, but I shared Doug conversations I had with the police and with APIs and stuff, right? Doug does not like how I'm talked to by Henry. The police don't like it either. And my dad doesn't like it either. Okay. Doug does not like Henry blaming me for not getting help and not being able to take care of myself. So Doug said, this is how you go about stopping that. This is how you word it. I took your suggestion to ask you, uh, about your day-to-day -day life. Well, guys, I told them this. I used this social script, copy and paste it. Instead of saying dad, by the way, he misspelled uh, that. I know that he misspelled it because he said that this is for my dad. So I changed this with two one one and uh put the names or the name of that and I said they refused me help, but they're not refusing me help, they just can't because of my disability. And I told him why I've been denied that help and I asked him for help. What do I do now? You guys told me to go to the hospital or go call two one for shelter placement. Two one one can't help me. Well, I should actually follow up here say, Hey, Henry, you told me to go back to the hospital. I've been trying that for years. The hospitals give me a hard time. What do you want me to do? I'm going to use this to help me write that email. My brother Joe says, I'm refusing help. I'm not accepting help. I'm not wanting help. Well, let's go back a little bit here because... There's something that I like what my dad did. By the way, let's see here. What day was this original email sent? Um, okay. 
Okay, so I was on the sixteenth. So the day of the original email would have been on the tenth. I had sent Henry an email. Um, that would have been on the tenth. So let me pause this real quick, so you don't have to see every email I. So yeah, guys, I like it when Dad helps me word things in the certain way. So this was the original email sent on the thirteenth. It was on the way. I was on the way to my counselor's appointment. My father asked me to call my dad, or, or my father asked me to call Henry. And I, I call Henry. I tell him what Dad was said. How Dad's upset he's not helping me, right? Getting the services and care I need, right? Well, I was a little frustrated. The conversation's right here. So my dad tells me, this is how you word it. I write it down and I send an email to Henry this. I write this here. To follow up with Henry, because Henry... Because my dad started giving me a hard time at this point, right? Dad started going at me and getting mad at me for asking him for help and repeating it. I'm sorry, that was the 13th when Dad started doing that. After he helped me write the uh, this email, he started going at me. We were on the way to Walmart. He was helping me by asking me questions about my autism and stuff. Well, once we got out of the hardware store, he started going at me. <laughs> oh, that hurt my ears. Duh. I didn't like that, Dad. I don't want a headbang. Please stop. Oh. I want to be calm. Please don't. Oh. Sorry. So. Sorry. And you don't have Tourette's Sorry, like I and you, you don't have Tourette's I like have I do. Anyways. So, anyways, I have this issue right here. I gotta put my earmuffs on. I don't, I'm trying my best, guys. Supper time. Okay, Dad. Thank Supper you. Time. So I had this right here, and why couldn't you just tell me that instead of causing me sensory overload? So anyways, this right here, real quick before I get ready to eat, I will, I will, I will finish this thought. So my dad explains why I wrote it this way, and I explained why. Remember this YouTube video, guys? I shared a video on and how it, uh, how my, how that same thing was in the email was in this email. I explained why Dad said to word it this way. Well, I want my dad to do that for me. I listened to my dad. Dad says I don't listen to him. Well, I listened to you, Dad. You told me why I explain it this way, because it'll help Henry feel good about himself for wanting to help me. I like that, Dad. I want you to help me. I need that help. By the way, the day before this happened, this email that I sent to Henry with Dad's help, my dad asked me to use my AEC app. My dad asked me to order my food with, at Wendy's with my AC app. And I had a conversation with the worker. And guess what? It was my first time actually having a back and forth conversation with my talker app. Yeah, I was... Yeah, I was being what you call selective mutinism there. Because I want to learn to use my AC app when I need help. So I don't get frustrated. I'm asking for that reminder at the hospital because I needed the help. So you're going to hear how I express myself calmly, explain why. I'll tell you a little bit about this recording that you're about to hear while I eat dinner. I express myself. I ask for that help. I stayed calm. I was stressed out. I thank them because they remain calm. They may remain patient with me. 
they took the social interaction slowly with me, which allowed me to be able to stay calm for them refusing me help. So after that, they were going to help me. They were going to try to help me. I asked for my Benadryl. They refused me my Benadryl. I can't help it. While I was waiting for the, my Benadryl, I was playing the Beatles music, which you heard in the first song. Uh, first, not first song, but first video, first recording. Well, this is the re this is while I was waiting. Before I started that vi uh, recording, I did this. In this recording here, you're going to hear me typing and doing it. I'm not refusing help. I'm waiting patiently for my Benadryl to help me with the process of whatever they're doing. I wanted to remain calm. I asked them for help. I'm being denied the help. Something that my dad or brother claims that I'm refusing. So here, you can't say that, Dad or Joe. And if, and if, because this happens all the fucking time, and Tandem does, did it, Miller Film or Suburban did it, everybody's doing it. Look, I can't help, my primary diagnosis is, mil, is, 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 is developmental disabilities, not mental health. I can't help it. Well, this is what I'm going through. I'm denied help because my primary diagnosis is developmental disabilities. So Nintendo could not help me through OMH housing. They put on my denial letter that I refused their help by saying I want to go through OPWDD. No, I wanted their help. Their pl the plan was, so you guys know, Nintendo was going to help me now with housing while I waited for the additional testing that they were going to help me with so I could get transferred to the appropriate care. Guys, I got, even though I had almost no assistance at the hospital with my continence and they give me a hard time, I'll show you a picture of the bed being wet and me asking it and that was ignored. I'll show you the recording of that too. That's coming on part three, but I want to show you this one. Because I'm not refusing help, and everybody says I am. And time and time again, I'm told, Oh, you refuse and accept your diagnosis, Andy. Andy, you're refusing your diagnosis. Well, I show them my spoil record. Now, I don't have schizoaffective disorder, Joe. I'm not refusing mental health help, Joe. Joanne and Erica, same thing. You can't just make this shit up. This is actual records right here to show I'm not eligible. Wait. Right here's additional records from Best Self. Same thing. I keep getting discharged from mental health because of my autism. But best self word it is, I was refusing their help. No, you denied me my appointment. I did not refuse it. I can't help. You were doing telehealth visits because of COVID. And then suddenly you changed your mind and supposedly set up a ride for me that I had no knowledge of. And when I didn't know what to do at my appointment, because I was told I would have gotten a phone call from the psychiatrist. I was then waiting for it. It was after my appointment. And I called. And I found out they canceled it. And they wanted to do it in person. So they, ref so they denied me help. After a suicide attempt nonetheless. Do you see this, guys? This is what causes me these behavior issues. This is what makes me question, am I really refusing help or what? Is this really causing me... I'm getting confused because I know what's happening. I know what's being said. I'm not refusing help. I have primary diagnosis of autism and intellectual disability that needs to go through OPWDD. But my dad doesn't want to accept right, the diagnosis, so I have a really hard time getting that help. 
Because Dad and Joe want to assist the mentally ill. Went into part two of this, you will hear I'm fighting Dad because he doesn't want to accept my diagnosis and he fights me on it and blames me for everything and everybody expects me to do the things that I can't do on my own. Well, you can thank my friend Doug Usiak for this. And I'm getting sensory overload. If you can't tell, I'm having a hard time. This is what I deal with every single day. The only thing is, I don't know what Dad wants me to do. And Dad does this, and I feel he does it on purpose. I asked him, please leave me alone. I don't want to have an argument. Just let me know when dinner's done. Let me know when you have everything done. I don't want an argument. You fought me on help asking me for help. I'm trying to leave you alone. And you're bugging me, Dad. And this this conversation about my dad right now isn't meant for this video. This my getting frustrated with my dad with sensory overload has nothing to do with my dad. This video was meant to show what I'm going through at the hospitals who refuse me help. And then I'll put this in safe mode to upload it to YouTube. But my father's keep go, uh, causing me issues. And he, and I'm getting upset because of that. It's delaying me from getting to the point. But he does this all the time. And I don't know why. Dad, can I please be left alone? You have your entertainment every single day. And the police come every single day for your entertainment. Please stop. Dad, please stop. I don't want to head bang. I don't want to get upset. I don't like it. My dad is what causes me to feel this way and act up. And I don't want it. I can't help it. I'm asking him to stop so I don't have the behavior issue. Because he's bitches about it. And then he neglects my medical care because he's angry because I have a behavior issue. You guys hear me asking him throughout this video to please stop. And he keeps doing it. He does the behaviors. He causes me to behave like this. Dad, please stop. Dad, leave me alone. I'm asking you. I'm doing a video. I'm asking you, please leave me alone. You keep going at me, and I keep asking you to stop. I don't want to have, be upset because you're overwhelming me. Sorry. Hey, Joe, I have this own re recording. That dad is going at me, and I keep asking him to stop. Sorry, guys. I'm getting frustrated here. This wasn't meant to be an argument with my dad asking him to please stop. But this is proof I'm not refusing help at all. Hi, Andrew. Hi. 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 How are you? Hi. Hi. I'm Katie, and we're chasing the NSF. Okay. You're being discharged. Where? To home. I don't, that's not a safe discharge. I cannot take care of myself, and I don't know why. I don't know why you guys are discriminating against me just like you repeat things. And I feel like it's, it's injustice, and, and I'm not capable of understanding why and what to do and how to get help I need. And I feel like my rights under the Obamacare Act is being violated and you are aware that I have made a civil rights complaint about this hospital, right? No. Yep. No HHS has a complaint ongoing about this hospital and Collider Hospitals in general. I cannot take care of myself. I don't know when to change my diet, but I don't know when to use the bathroom. I have trouble crossing the street. I cannot take my medicines without assistance and you're not being fair 
to me because I can repeat things and I feel that's malpractice and discrimination. I cannot, I do not understand. And that's why I made a accommodation request of a social story and I'm scared now that you're not going to help me and I'm going to be, a, a, you're expecting me to do things I don't know how to do. I have an IQ 87. I have a language level of a 12 year old. I have autism and I can't function. And I feel you're just, you're expecting me to do things I don't know how to do. Oh, okay. There you go. Are, no, <coughs> are you doing something? Well, like you're being discharged. Oh, yeah, yeah. We just want to, uh, our attending. Yeah, uh, here, come on. Okay. Come on. I feel I'll be discriminated against because I can't take care of myself. And, and, and I am not able to take my medicines with assistance. And you're expecting a, a disabled man to do things on their own. I don't know how to do it without assistance. And I'm scared now because I keep having these issues and I made a complaint with the Outside Human Services and it's discrimination and I'm going to follow up with a brand new complaint regardless if you discharge me or not. Mm -hmm. I don't, I don't, I guess this is, this is causing me distress because I can't take care of myself. I need help. Um, it's for my medical need, care yeah. that I need help with, and you're my doctor. Gotcha. I hear you, my friend. And I know the psychiatry uh, folks, I believe it was Dr. Cartagena, right, that saw you this morning. Yeah. Did you guys have a nice conversation? I told her this stuff. Okay. Gotcha, gotcha. She was uh, great. Look into placement. Yeah, yeah. The other thing, too, is would you mind if we reached out to your dad to kind of check? Because we want to get some more information about what things are like at home. I can't function at home because he's not able to take care of me. Mm -hmm. And I have a lot of behavior issues because of it. Yeah, gotcha, gotcha. And I think it would be helpful for us to, you know, look into that a little bit more. So just getting some extra details about, you know, his perspective. I can't test my head. sugar. I have trouble showering on my own. I have trouble crossing the street. I have trouble keeping structure. I have sensory issues. Yeah. Yeah. And I have difficulty meeting sameness and routine, and I need assistance. Right, right. I hear you, my friend. And I have things that, oh, like my direct doctor in April and genetics, mm -hmm. but I also need further testing by a neuropsychologist mm -hmm. for the autism and the Tourette to get me so everything because an MD can't do that. It has to be a PhD, which I don't understand why. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm I mean, just confused by all of this, and I'm getting a run around on this, yeah. and I don't know what to do. Yeah, I hear you, my friend, and it's a confusing system, to say the least, that's certainly for sure. And my and primary care doctor says I don't have capacity, mm -hmm. Dr. Elliot. Mm -hmm. So, you know, part of that, that's one of the things that, you know, we're chatting with the psychiatry folks about, you know. Um, but the long story short with that, you know, to your point about, you know, checking how things are at a home and that sort of thing, um, I think it would be helpful for us to get more information. Call my APS worker, because mm -hmm. he's the one who wanted, wanted me to come here. Gotcha, gotcha. Okay. If well, there's not a shelter, uh, she gives my disability and medical need. Mm -hmm. gotcha. I have no home services, nothing. Okay. I don't have a nurse coming in. I don't have... I need to get back into speech with ODPT, and my primary care doctor doesn't feel it's a good idea for me to take Medicaid cabs without having dad go with me because my incontinence, my safety issue, and my communication challenges and difficulty understanding things to follow directions. Mm -hmm. And I'm not able to follow those speech assess or recommendations, even though it helps me when my dad does help me with that, and then he does it. Gotcha. And then he gets mad at me for having behavior issues I can't help. Mm, I see. Okay. Because he doesn't want to help me with the things that I need help with, and then he and then he mistreats me because I need all this help and he can't handle it. Gotcha. He was up here last night and he couldn't 
even really walk, and you guys are expecting a 72-year-old man to take care of me? Yeah, I hear you, my friend. So I think that the long story short with everything, because you're going through a lot, my friend, and you've been through a lot of the system already, and as you're, you know, seeing firsthand, it's not an easy system, you know, which I, I give you a lot of credit for doing what you've done already with it. Um, I think a good next step would be to reach out to those two people that you just mentioned in terms of Dr. Elliot. Um, we work at the, the same office with him, so it's easy enough for us to chat with him too, uh, get some other perspective on things, and then we can certainly chat with the APS worker and okay. go those lanes and go from there, okay? Okay, yeah, Does Dr. Elliot, I like a lot, mm -hmm. and... I like my, the nurse practitioner, she knows how to help me when I'm in crisis. Gotcha, gotcha. And she's not scared of me when I'm ending a meltdown. She knows how to comfort me, and that makes me feel better. That's great. I'm so glad and I do best with one-on-one -on -one person and distractions, but I can't do the things on my own. I need somebody to help me. Gotcha, gotcha. Okay. And that's why, that's what I don't get at home, and my dad keeps going at me working me up to the point where I have a meltdown because I ask him for help and he doesn't help me what to expect to win and then I get keep asking him over over again and I get upset gotcha. and then because of that he gets mad at me and starts yelling at me and I hit my head or run away or throw things or mm -hmm. and then I go have these issues and then he keeps going at me instead of helping me calm down and then it's dealing with the police all the time, my only support I have. Yeah. Well, I'm glad that you, and I'm the police you doesn't friend, have... Right? That's always really great, my friend. So I think to that end, let me reach out to Dr. Elliot and we'll get some more information. Dr. Elliot and doesn't so think well, I have you know. capacity and I need guardianship, but he's not qualified. He, well, he says he's not able to do that without a psychiatrist, yeah. but without psychiatry, a qualified psychiatrist to work with someone with autism, it's where I'm in this boat. Yeah. I'm aware that doctor that you brought in is not qualified because I worked with her before here. Gotcha, gotcha. And well, Dr. Cardahan is very qualified. Um, but let, the long story Not to work with autism, though. Let me uh, touch base with some of those other people that we, you mentioned, get some more information, and we can take it from there. Okay. okay. It, why well, can't mental health? professionals help me because I go to a, a counselor that is trying to pass me on to someone else because she she can't help me because my autism mm -hmm. this is this is every mental clinic I keep going to it makes me feel like I'm faking my problems when I know I'm not okay. well let me get some more information okay yeah okay. please I want you to help me At least my headache went away from earlier. I forgot to say that. Yeah. Can I have your, can I get your sugar, sweetie? Yeah, can I have my Benadryl, please, to help me relax? It's a choice to want to function and want to do things, but I just need help from other people. Oh, I understand what and you're saying. I'm not getting that help, and I get the best help from c t and at ABA therapy. But I can't get ABA therapy, and I need to make my speech appointment. And my urology wants me to see a physical therapist for my incontinent issue. Mm -hmm. 
it's just very difficult because. Trying to do this thing? Yeah. One, two. Ouch. I know, it's torture, isn't it? Yeah, that. I'm just. Oh, we're dubbed too. It's just. It's just. I don't understand things very well. And you guys were calm and patient with me, which helped me add that back and forth conversation without getting upset. Mm -hmm. And a lot of times I don't get that from people. Aww. And yeah, I have a hard time. Honey, you're, you're so these two old tricks, okay? Oh, okay. So I'm going to get you some insulin, is that okay? Yeah, at least my headache has gotten better oh. after not being on the screen as much. You know what? Sometimes what? that does it. A lot of screen time really can hurt your headache. Yeah. I think what the issue is my glasses were dirty, too. I think the glasses were dirty, which I had to clean in the bathroom. Oh my goodness. Yeah, and then I didn't realize my diaper was wet, so I had to change while I was in there. And then I was sitting on the toilet, and I didn't even know I had to go poop, which was a good thing I was in there. Because I don't want to have an accident, because that would need some help. And that's embarrassing. Yeah, don't ever be embarrassed. I'm not. It's very frustrating because I know you guys want to help me and you guys need to have a reason to keep me because this is not a medical or mental health need. Is that what you guys are running into? Well, I have a feeling you're going to try to figure this out. Yeah, because I, I, I... Little coke, sweetie, is that okay? Yeah, it's in my arm, please. Arm right here? Yeah, squeeze it, please. Squeeze, 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 squeeze. Okay. All done. All done. Thank you. Thank you. Of course. Yeah, I'm just scared because I don't understand what to do. Well, guess what? They're looking into it, okay? Yeah, they say I need a nursing home level of care for, uh, for, um, versus assisted living, but... In order for me to get a PRI done, it has to be done by, it has to go through OPWDD. Yeah. And because my diagnosis. And the last time I had that done in October, OPWDD refused it, plus I didn't, plus the nurse that did the PRI retired, so I didn't have anyone to help me submit it to the DOH. Yeah. So that's why if you guys could do that here, it would help me get some kind of system. For sure. Okay, and, sweetie. And I don't understand this process. It's just something I can repeat. I don't get it. I'm just as confused as you guys, but it seems like I know a lot of what I need to do because it's all in my records, but... Right. And everything I need to do is... But it's, it takes time. And time is money. And hospitals want to get paid. Right. And you know that. It's not cheap, especially when there's no medical need. You know? Right. So what could they do? I mean, I mean, there is a medical need. It's called preventive care, right? Mm -hmm. Well, sweetie, we're working on it, okay? Yeah, I know. I, I did a good job staying calm. You did. You did a good job. I tried. I really... I really have a hard time doing that, and if it was for the doctor and you guys being calm with me and, and, and slow with the conversation, yeah, I would have had a really hard time with that. Aww. But I really have a hard time, and I really want you guys to help me through this, please. Of course. And distract me with my teddy bear and my stress balls, please, and my star glow to help me stay relaxed. Is I want help. All right, honey, I'll be back, okay? Yeah, Please? yes. I really don't like having meltdowns. They scare me a lot. I don't think you're having. I'm doing great. I'm going to try. Yes, thank you. Of course. Thank you.
I'm at the point where I didn't even have to eat food. So YouTube, that's the first time through the discharge process. That's the first time before I was discharged. See, I'm not refusing help. In, ta in tandem, the group home in Olean did the same thing with me. I'll pause. So YouTubers, I did a quick redact here. So here's the email I received with the person's contact information who asked me for my contact information by a tandem to help me with the OPWDD process. Let me pause. Here's that this here's that this uh denial letter from um a tandem. It says that I wanted to go to OPWD. I didn't want to go through OMH. No, I did not say I didn't want to have their help. I called the, this person three times that week. Not going on YouTube. Because I'm not bitching about her. Even though I asked her two times last week out of the three... After I got this letter, to request her to please change her reason for denying me. I don't agree with this. Because she told me last week, Monday, that even if I was to continue this, I would have been denied. Because my primary diagnosis, according to my mental health professional, is autism and developmental disabilities. Secondary is a depression and anxiety. Well, I didn't refuse help. I didn't say I didn't want it. I didn't say I wanted OPWD or OMH. I just said I wanted them to help me. The original plan was that they were going to help me through the mental health home. Okay. Then they were going to help me with the placement with OPWDD services. They were going to help me get there. They, This lady named Janelle had told me that at my counselor session uh, on the 13th. I remember me saying I had that appointment. Well, I want you to know that that was done and I was, you know, had this assistance, right? Guess what? They said that they couldn't help me. Gotta go through OPWDD. Well, fine. If I had to go through OPWDD, then help me get the testing. You guys are on the list of doctors for doing that testing. Oh, by the way, it says legal guardian... Was the referral source. Technically I don't have a legal guardian. So why. Does it say legal guardian for. As a referral source. So if I have a legal guardian. I don't have the capacity to refuse help. Do I? I just realized that. I just realized that one. I'm not refusing help am I? I don't have the capacity to refuse that help. <clears throat> Remember me saying that I it, I it is easy to blame me for refusing help. It's, it's very easy to say uh, to blame me for not getting the help I need. I'm a person with a communication problem, processing issue, and a behavior issue, and autism 
and the the disability and the incontinent issue and stuff like that. This is the point I'm bringing up, guys. I have the behavior issues because I need help and I can't take care of myself. One of the questions I asked you now is, what if I get a uh, placement in the mental service? And, you know, what if they do accept me, even with my diagnosis as is? She said it would not matter because my primary diagnosis is developmental disability. And I told her, well, if it's developmental disabilities, then I want you to please put that in writing for why you're denying me. And she said, oh, I don't, I'm not doing that because it's already written. I'm like, you're blaming me. And I don't think it's fair because it's easy to blame me for this stuff. But yet you said, it. I told you that on Friday, by the way, this past Friday. She didn't want to hear it. She said, all further communication has to go through this person at my mental clinic. Um, why? Because you're refusing me help? See what I'm going through here. I want to help and I'm being denied it. I asked her, please change this because this is not accurate. By the way, I don't have paper to make that request because dad won't let me get paper so I can make this request. So, yeah, there's two things right off the bat. I'm not refusing help because my primary diagnosis is autism. She said that. But the second part, legal guardian. I don't have capacity to make the choice. You <laughs> see what I'm trying to get at here. But, by not to start anything, and I'm not trying to start anything on this recording, I don't want to start anything, but Joe and Dad insist that I refuse to accept my diagnosis and help. I have both mental health and autism. Well, yeah, my autism developmental disabilities is why I have the emotional issues. It's proof, guys. I'm aware of what causes my issues. And I ask for that help at the hospital so they don't help me. Or so that I don't have the behavior issues. And they denied me that assistance. I had a behavior issue. Because I, even though I asked for the accommodations, you didn't hear anyone helping me. They just wanted me to go home and they just kept refusing me and ignoring my concerns. See, this is where I'm just bringing this up, guys. The help is being offered, but they're refusing me. And then they offer me help. This is where I'm really angry. In tandem, offer me help. I'm denied. Millen Fillmore Suburban Hospital offered me help, and then they denied me. So let me pause real quick. So I had a little issue with my dad on the recording, if you heard earlier in this recording. Right? So I do want to be fair at um, saying thank you, Joe, for uh, helping me at dinner time with Dad. And I want to say thank you, Dad, for bringing my diapers in that they were refusing me because here's one of the wet beds that I had. So I brought up the point, well, my mom had diapers and she was here. You guys gave her them. Why aren't you on me? And I'll tell you why in a second. But quickly, I could go into this and then I got. You know, let me ask my dad something. Hey, Dad? Turn off. Catch it. Just a minute. Is it. Sure. I'll turn off kitchen. Okay, Google. Okay, Google. Turn off porch. Is it is it time to take my medicine? Yeah, I'm taking it. Okay, then you gotta take it upstairs after I take it. Well then, can I bring it up? That's not what I asked. So I asked him, "Is it time to take my pills yet, Dad?" He said, "Yeah, I'll go go take them." Look, I'm asking because I need that help. I'm pretty sure it's time to take him. I just want Dad's help. Okay. And I said, well, Dad, could you take it upstairs after I take him? He said, 
I'll tell you too much. I gotta go to bed. I said, okay, well, I'll bring it up then for you. He said, take it tomorrow. I'm like, yeah, you're confusing me. So I have a few seconds to uh, take it in a second. So I want to quickly sh end this. So the reason why is that they denied me diaper at first. Is because I, according to them, don't need them. So I want to show you something. Because this time around, by the way, so you guys know this time around at the hos at this hospital stay they allowed me my medications. Oh boy, when I made the complaint that they were denying me my medications last time with the health and human services and my insurance, they made sure I got my medications. Okay, look at this. These are all my medicines. They made sure I had my memetidine and my guafacine. Oh, by the way, the overnight nurse, when they gave me my mementidine, uh, when I was actually transferred from DeGraff to Milfilmore, they gave me the guafacine and they said, do you take it now or in the morning? I said, I take it always in the morning. And I already took it today. Well, they put down guafacine for my blood pressure, but no, it's actually for my ADHD. And it's also for my Tourette. So, here's this right here, right? Wait, wait, see, do you see this, idiot, now you're trying to tell me that I'm not incontinent, hey, I want to give you an update, so, <clears throat> there was a little delay getting me my diaper, so you know, this month. They needed a refill from my doctor. They said that they said at first it was my insurance that was denying it. I didn't have the appropriate insurance, so I went to my insurance and said, "Hey, they're denying me my diapers because HDIS is not a participating place for my diapers." But then I found out that when I asked for a refill, so I re asked for a refill, right? They were giving me the Tranquility uh, Contour Booster Pad. Okay. As an insert. With the Cardinal Health Diaper. Which, by the way, I explained why I wear the plastic back diaper. And I want you to know that they had helped me with how do I go about getting the Tranquility over all throughout the night diapers paid for. And I want you to know that how to go about doing it. I'll get that in a second, right? So, I ordered, I asked them, well, can I, you know, because the Tranquility, I like better than the, um, you know, the cloth back diaper, because the diapers of the cloth back just give me the skin issue. Well, and they leak a lot more. So, I asked for the Tranquility all throughout the night, right? But I also asked for a booster pad. Well, they don't offer their tranquility all through their night, so that I already know that, so I bought mine out of pocket, right? Well, I asked for the booster pads because the tranquility is not enough during the nighttime. I need the booster pad. So they told me that they were going to order it, but then they were giving me the full allotment for the booster pad that I'm allowed per month, and found out that they were out of... They were no longer carry the Tranquility uh, uh, booster pads for me. That I had to get a different one. They were giving me a bladder control pad. It didn't seem right. I never heard of fi uh, Fit Right um, booster pad. I went online. There's no such thing. Right? So I found out they were giving me the wrong product. Right? So I called and made sure that they delayed the shipment. I asked them, well, can you help me with this? I want to make sure I get the right product. Because this sounds like a maxi pad type thing. Yep, it was made to go in regular underwear for women. But the pad that they were giving me instead was their brand, the Reassure brand, Booster Pad this time. 
And it was their brand new one that was on stock that's more absorbent than the Tranquility. I said, okay, great, let's get it. So I asked him for that. Because this one is not only for... Because my prescription is not only for bowel incontinence, but also urinary incontinence. So I qualify for the contour or the contour uh, booster pads. And by the way, I said that contour to booster pads don't really matter if it's for bowel incontinence or not. Because I still going to need to change the diaper. It does not save the diaper when I poop my diaper. And you know what? That's the common issue with this. Yeah, you're still going to need diaper you, uh, change usually. But I don't know why my doctor ordered a contour booster pad for for the bowel incontinence. So they have a different one. They actually have one that actually have leak guards inside the uh, on on uh, the booster pad, but it's flow through. It's also more absorbent. So there's no flat panel booster pad that goes inside a, a pull up or a diaper. It's all with the leg gather stuff, right? So you're going to love this, guys. So I show them this. It was then a different story I got a pull-up that night. Well, the pull-up does not keep me dry like I've been explaining. does not work, but I tried it. I have problems with the sensory problem. But hey, I went to bed. They woke me up in the morning to get, uh, to take my, uh, to test my, I think it was to test my blood sugar. No, it was to give me my medicines first, and then it was to test my blood sugar. So they gave me my medicines, right? And I didn't realize I was wet at that point because I was still groggy starting to wake up. So when I woke up finally uh, completely and when they tested my blood sugar at that point, it hurts. I'm already waking up. Okay, great. Guess what? I use my AEC app. I explain I'm wet. I need help. The nurse ignores me. I'm, I explain why I'm using it because I'm embarrassed. I'm scared to ask. Because the last time I asked for a diaper and clean diaper, I was mistreated. And I explained that to him in my AEC app. And I didn't want to get upset, which is why I used my AEC app. I used it even though I was calm enough to be able to speak. I was also showing my fear, my scared, expressive tone. The nurse ignored me. So then I, you know, asked her again. She ignored me. I have my earmuffs on. And I know she didn't say it, anything. Because I have been recording. I played it back later on in the day. And I asked her again. Three times told her. Well, she ignored me. I then entered it a different way. I was asking if you could help me please change my bed. I asked that twice. She ignored it. So then I asked her again a third time, I'm talking to you, and I asked you if you can please help me change my bed. I'm wet. I wet my bed. She ignored me the first time, and then I played a second time, and she said, I will tell your nurse. Well, at that point, I had to change my pull because you, I'm already wet. I gotta go change, you know. So I go change. Well, I was waiting in the bathroom on the toilet for over almost an hour, and I was hurting my back sitting there. I don't know how my mom could sit on the toilet for over an hour and two hours, three hours at a time to play her games and stuff. But I was hurting. I had to get up. So I got up and put on my regular pants. I was not in the pull up. I needed one. So I asked them for a pull-up or a diaper, a day, and I showed her why. Because, or, or no, I'm sorry, I put on the the other pull-up that they had told me, that they gave me. They gave me three that night. I put on the third one. Well, when I was waiting for them to change this, was how long it took. It was an hour later, by the way. I don't know when I went to bed through the pull-up. It could have been two hours, three hours, an hour before, but I was sitting in the toilet for over an hour trying to go 
while I was waiting, I couldn't go poop, I didn't go pee, and I had to put another pull up on. I gave up. I started eating my breakfast because they said my breakfast was there. So I started eating my breakfast standing up here. And I thought maybe peeling me, uh, I tried taking this sheet off the mattress, and they're hard. You guys would probably know. The hospital mattress is kind of harder to take it off. Because I can take it off. But when I started taking it off, they, uh, um, you know, my breakfast, you know, was s sitting there. And I wanted to make sure I eat. I wanted to try to sit here first to make sure that they know I was wet. But then I started, st I standed just because I wanted them to see it. They're, they're taking their time. They're not coming in. Well, what happens? They ignore me. So what happens is, I start, I write on the back of the receipt of the food order. I made an HHS complaint, and I'm walking out because you guys don't want to help me. You'd rather help other people, and I'm upset, and I'm scared to asking you. Because I get diaper shame, and I don't get help with my hygiene and stuff. Well, I put that in the report, on the on that receipt. I started walking out. Oh, no, no, don't leave, don't leave. I was busy helping other. After that point, they were real quick almost changing me, the sheets. Except for giving me a pull-up at that point. I was already in the last book they gave me for a while, right? And I went. I had my pants on because they also refused to help me with the robe. I needed help with it, putting it together, and to tie in it. They just put it on the bed after they changed the bed, and I needed help with that. And I asked her for that help, and they walked away from me. They just left it there. So the doctor came in, and I said, I need this help, and then, you know, and then I, I told him, I have all these records. He said, okay, great. Can you sort out the ones that you need for your assessments, your past assessments, with your accommodations, the things you need help with, your childhood records? All in a neat pile, a neat pile like that. So I did that for him. I put everything in a neat pile, waited for them to come back like they said they would. Yeah, well, that never happened. And I started hurting my back, and I had to go lay down after eating lunch. At that point, I was already in a wet pants because the pull-up leaked through. I asked for a new pull-up. I showed him why. I needed a new pull-up. Why it leaked and why the pull-ups don't work because all the witness stays in front and it leaks out and it doesn't go throughout the back when you're uh, sitting or standing. So I wanted them to know why the pull-ups don't work for me and why they don't absorb enough because it wasn't much padding that was dry before it started leaking. It, 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 it was... It, they don't leak. They don't stay in your pants. It's the, you know, there's nothing to keep it in there while you're peeing. And it's hard for me to know when I'm peeing until it starts leaking out on me. See, this is the point here. Nurses are supposed to help with it. Is, and I told them that it was hard for me to get into a pull-up because of my back. I had to take off everything, and it's hard for me. They didn't care. I told them they had diapers, but I didn't argue with them. I didn't argue with them. Because when they denied me a pull-up at this point, I had to ask your nurse. Your nurse has to okay it. I'll bring you a diaper if, if your nurse okays it. So I asked my nurse. She brings me a pull-up. You know why she brings me a pull-up for? After asking and asking and asking, and I kept on saying, I'm afraid of having an accident. I already wet through my pull-up, and I'm wet a little bit. I'm afraid of having more accidents. I just won't drink while I wait for you. Oh, by the way, then it was a totally different story. Your doctor, who was treating you here, said not to give you a diaper because you don't need it. I don't need a condom. It's not medically necessary. Um, why does my urologist prescribe it for? And I pointed out. Oh, by the way, why does my urologist prescribe a, a, a nose spray for me? Oh, I have no idea. 
Well, my primary care doctor says it's one spray, but I have the actual prescription bottle. And I gave it to them to look at, and the doctor, and they were putting the order, but they only did it for one spray. I get four! So, I pointed that out to them, and the nurse last night allowed me to have my, o my own DDAVP spray that I take four sprays of. During this time, I was without water. I have a hard time asking for it. I have a hard time remembering to ask. And they don't even come in and check up on me. They don't even... I ask them, can you please help me to the bathroom since you're not allowing me to wear a diaper? Can you remind me to go to the bathroom like I, I'm, like I need help with? And they just ignored my request for that. You're not giving me a, pull, a diaper. You're not allowing me to be dry because the pull-ups don't work. I explain I wear diapers, and you're telling me that I can't wear one. And now you're telling me that you're not uh, uh, not going to help me go to the bathroom every hour, every two hours, so I don't wet myself. You're telling me you're expecting me to do that bathroom reminder on my own without any fucking assistance? I need help. And when I asked you, can you help me to the bathroom since you're not allowing me to have this, and I need help with that reminder, and she said, well, how do you remind yourself at home? I said, I have a first den board. I have a picture board. Oh, can I see it? Yeah, it's right here. I got it out of my book bag. I need help setting this up, please. She didn't want to help me set it up. I brought my routine board with me. So I can know what to do and keep myself busy. But no. They didn't want to help me. Again, I'm asking for help so I can remain calm and, and patient with them. By the way, they were giving me guafacine immediate release. And I'm having a hard time sitting still. Why? Because it wore off already. But it's hard for me. I gotta take my nighttime medicine, which does not include the guafacine. I don't understand these people. And by the way, I don't know when it's time to take my medicine next. Because I, uh, my, my, not my medicine, but my Benadryl. Because I had to take it a little while ago, but I don't remember what time I took it. But I also know it's not time yet. I hope you guys hear this stuff and understand what I'm going through. I will talk to you guys later. Have a good one. I will I will edit this. Um, I'll render this in the morning uh, when I wake up. And then I will um, upload it after. Have a good one. Sorry, uh, sorry, YouTube. I ended my recording and then I forgot to tell you guys something. So, and I still go render it in the morning when I wake up so I don't use my screen time. And my computer doesn't stay on all night. Like, it doesn't go to sleep when I asked it to. So, I want to quickly add something before I forget this one. And this is at the end of this video. And I know I just had to re re uh, do it, uh, add something to it. So, my room didn't have a bathroom. In it. Well, I had a bathroom, I meant, but not a shower, I meant. So, if I actually pooped my pull-up, it would have been a mess everywhere, because that leaks. And I would never been able to get to, uh, to clean it up on my own. You know, I told that to my nurse. I need that help, you know, I'm not getting the help I needed here, and I told him that. I told him how I need help in the shower, and, you know, I bought my picture steps. I just need help to get in the shower. If I poop my diaper, you know, and there's no shower in here. I'm not creepy to just go do it on my own. Well, you know what's really fucked up here is I only pooped twice during this three-day stay, and guess what happened? I had trouble 
where I had pooped on the toilet the one t- the first time, right? The one or the one time. And I had no idea how to go poop. I just was sitting there because I had to change my pull up. And like I said, I had went poop. I tried or uh, tried when I actually had the wet bed. I didn't go. I couldn't go. I didn't know if I had to go. But I was sitting there for almost an hour. Well, long story short on this one, I ended up, you know, trying. But I tried the next time I had a wet pull up too. And I ended up going poop. And I asked for some wipes. This was after they refused me the pull up, by the way. And I had to change my pull up after they gave me one. So they gave me them, and then they refused me them, and then I got them, and then I asked for a wipe after changing that one, that very next pull-up, and I explained to her, you know, I can't use toilet paper because of my grip. I have a hard time using it. I have a sensory issue. Can I have some wipes, please? She said, yeah, let me go get it. She brings them in. Only a few. So I... Use they use dry wipes, you know, and I go wiping my bottom, getting it wet in the sink and t- uh, putting it in the garbage can, you know, like you're supposed to. And it's you know embarrassing. You know, I'm I found a way to be able to help myself take care of that when I poop on the toilet. If I poop my diaper, I'm going to need help. Their wipes are already are garbage because it doesn't clean you properly. It, it it actually just you're just moving the poop. It's basically what you're doing with their wipes, even when it's wet. And I find it very it takes forever. Well, it's a little a lot easier than the toilet paper of using the whole roll and clogging the toilet. But they gave it to me without having a problem. I was able to be independent. Okay, well, the next time I had pooped, I didn't even know I had a wet diaper this morning. Dad brought me my uh, tranquility all through the night, and I want to say thank you, Dad, for that. It was Dad also spent over an hour with me last night on my visit, and he was told by the nurse that they would keep me for testing for placement. Um, Dad, I'm sorry, they refused to do that. It's not my fault, and everybody's blaming me, and then saying, I'm refusing help when I'm not. Well, long story short, I didn't even know I had to poop. I just changed my diaper as I didn't even realize it was wet. I only know it was wet because I had a really bad headache, and I went to clean my glasses under the in the bathroom with water, and I let it air dry. That's the only reason why I knew my diaper was wet. If it wasn't for me getting up and uh, going to you know to the bathroom, wash my glasses after having a severe killer headache, playing chess. By the way, I ignored the headache a little bit because I was I was on a winning streak uh, playing chess. I was on a tear. I didn't want to stop, even though my head was hurting me. Well, they said, well, you could be on the screen causing your migraine, you know. I said, yeah, but I don't normally have this on my phone. So I thought maybe it was my glasses because they were kind of like steamy and foggy. So that's why I went to clean it. Yeah, it made a difference, people. But I went to, I went to, um, I thought I was really having a head issue. You know, because I had been a lot. They didn't even give a fuck. They came in and helped me. They gave me Tylenol. That was about it. Hey, I'm sorry. I asked for the room dark. That fixed the issue. Guess what? Guess what? I'm going to tell you something. I told them the side effect I had from my migraine medicine. Last time I had it. Oh, no, they won't give me it. Because I explained the side effects I had it. They won't give them to me. You know why? I'm not giving you that because it sounds like you're allergic to it. Well, nobody actually officially told me if I'm allergic to it, so I'm not adding it to my allergy list. I'm not adding it unless they tell me I'm allergic to it. The same with the other one that I had issues with the same side effect. The thing is, the um, SUT1 or whatever it's called. Uh, I Let me get my med list. I'll show you. 
because my primary care doctor has two migraine medicines. Yeah, this one here. This one here gave me really the same side effect I get from my other one, right? So I asked my primary care doctor to go back to this one. The whole reason why Dent Neurology gave me that other one, uh, took me off this one and gave me the other one, is because I had similar side effects. Usually when I take this one, those side effects go away after the 15 or 20 minutes of after it start working. This one gets in my system and starts working almost right away. It's a, a very a fast dissolve tablet. It's why it cannot be crushed. It is also why it has to be in a package and not in sunlight. Because there's no coating on it. It gets in your system real quick. It takes about 10 minutes. And it, you're already starting to get relief. But by that time, I'm already getting the severe side effects I usually get with this. But it usually goes away after 15, 20 minutes of the side effects starting to take. You know, the first half an hour is usually all I had to deal with it. Well, it didn't go away this time. The trouble breathing part. The difficulty with my um, throat feeling and, and, and tightness in my chest. The same side effect I got throughout the entire day, almost day and a half with this one here. I had to take Benadryl. I know I can take Benadryl, guys, to take a, uh, to take out the re allergic reaction. Why do I know that? Because my mom's a nurse. You take it when you're bee sting. Well, I know I probably should go to the hospital because I've been told that with other allergies, like when I developed an allergy to the Allegra. I was told to go to the hospital. I didn't want to go to the hospital because I was homeless during the time. I was at the Scottish Inn, like on Shirt Drive, remember 2020. And I didn't want to go to the hospital because they were already refusing me. They were putting me in danger. I almost got hit by cars a few times. I wasn't even allowed a cold blue shelter. See, everybody thinks I'm refusing shelters. No, I'm not. But we're not arguing this. We're not arguing this. We're not going back to that. The problem is I have issues of wanting to go to the hospital even when I need to go. I mean, when I had GI bleeds, I was told to go to the hospital. I don't want to go to the hospital because wait, they don't want to help me. If I didn't go to Rochester to run away, I would have never had back surgery. Emergency back surgery, that is. I was almost paralyzed. Or I could have been paralyzed because they didn't fix it at that time. Oh, by the way, it gets longer. It gets it gets better. Because I have a part two to this video. Stay tuned because you hear how they don't want to help me and in the recording. And I asked them for that help. But you also want to hear what the security guards had told Amherst police. They don't care if I get hit by a car or if I went running away being on the sidewalk waiting for dad. That's why Amherst Police took me back to dad's house. And I want to say thank you for keeping me safe. And by the way, to the Amherst cop that has a son with autism, I hope your son doesn't ever have to go through what I'm going through. It's not fair.